All right, guys, here we are with Dark Souls, the board game, doing a solo run. I was going to say two player, but uh, solo two heroes. I'm playing the warrior and the assassin. And I thought this would be a, a really great way to kind of clear a room or two, answer that question, how does Dark Souls play as a solo game? And, and share with you kind of, if you're a Souls enthusiast, share with you my decision-making process. And we'll see kind of how far we can go and, and what decisions I can make and if they make any sense. I like this as a solo board game because it's you and your characters against the game mechanics, the cards and the AI. It scales really well, and I find it's great because you can, the grinding effect, I can play a room or two for 10, 20, 30 minutes, and then do something else, come back later, come back tomorrow. It lends itself really well to just putting on some really good background music. Uh, my two favorite tracks are uh, Diablo or Infinity Blade 1, the soundtrack to that, and, and kind of get into this dungeon crawl feel with how we're going to play. I have selected the Gargoyle to fight. I know normally you don't put them out, but I kind of like to lay it out there and focus on the goal where it's going. We have three single soul encounters and one two soul encounter. I've laid out the tiles. I've made a couple of decisions with how to lay them out with the two soul, how you lay the tiles out and how you connect them based on laying out the souls is, is very, very important. And I know that you have to place one of the most powerful souls before the fog gate. But what this means is after that first run, depending on what we draw and reveal, if I can remember it, Dark Souls is very much a memory game. And my brain these days is just packed with way too many rule sets and, and way too many games. But if we draw a really, really powerful room encounter here, what that means is now I have at least two ways of entering, two ways of, of tackling that room. And as we burn down on the spark, the sparks, when I finally am ready to make that run to the gargoyle, if these rooms are a little bit challenging, I can go here, here, and then through the fog gate. So right away, tactics on how you're going to lay things out. I've decided to play two. I've chosen the warrior and the assassin. My thoughts behind that, I mean, certainly everyone has their favorite character, and uh, the warrior is my favorite character, but the difference between also playing the knight, they're back there, and the herald, is uh, tank and support. The knight and the warrior are support. Now, of course, the blacksmith deck over here, the item deck, what you draw, is going to influence that. I am uh, not playing any house rules. I'm going straight from the rule book. So it's not a buy. It's not a swap. It's not a sell. It's not an item store. We're just totally going to see what we get from the deck. I, I find that very charming and alluring and seductive in there, kind of grinding and, and getting items. So things might develop differently, but one tank and one support. The Herald kind of buffing, attacking from range or healing versus the Assassin who is going to utilize dodge in this case, or depending on the items we acquire, I might go techno or, or mage assassin. Once we get the expansions, as of this video right now, there are no Dark Souls expansions. And once we add in the character pack and we get access to true magic classes, uh, then possibly I'll, I'll play one of them. The problem with two tanks is when you start engaging, you need both tanks up there to engage. And that doubles, certainly that works in the damage output, but what happens or has the possibility to happen if I play the warrior and the knight, this is kind of the theory thinking behind it, the challenge becomes both of those are on the base node of the boss or some of the more powerful encounters like a sentinel, and they're going to hit you and you're going to take damage that's two chances to have the dice really punish you. And if one person goes down, then we're back to the bonfire. At least with a supporting character, I can stay at range or use dodge. And that's one character that in theory is out of the way. I can focus on just whatever that tank is going to be. And the souls in the gear, the armor and everything, I put that on the tank. I don't need to, to divide that between two tanks. That's, that's just kind of what I've found. Uh, set up for solo... Since we're talking about solo, what I really like about this game 
is that it's just big enough. There's enough pieces where you're like, wow, we've got a lot of stuff. But it's not like Zombie Side or, or say, uh, Conan or other games you're going to play solo where it's all over the place. I've got everything here compact. I've got it laid out. I've got my two characters. I could do all four. Over here, I've got my token pile. I've got the AI cards. I like to lay them out to refer to them. I've got the gargoyle ready, although we haven't drawn for uh, the AI deck. We'll do that when we get up to them. Got my traps. Over here, I've got my figures laid out and dice. Just, just kind of everything ready to go. So let's make that run. Let's see what we can do. We're going to hit the first uh, room up. So we're going to reveal the card. We're going to lay out the miniatures and the entry point of course is determined we'll see the node so we've got dark hollow well i'm not too happy about drawing about drawing a large hollow soldier but i am happy about drawing a chest tombstone probably works for most people that actually have a memory the chests are very very important now i'm not going to reveal any of the other decks card encounters because i certainly don't want to spoil it if you're thinking about getting the game or if you're still in the process of discovering the game but every time you defeat a room you're going to get souls equal to the number of players so we're going to get two souls per character we're going to get four souls you use those to level stats up or buy gear when you open a chest it only works once but you get two item cards that's big that's like two free souls an encounter and and certainly there have been times where i've run through all four rooms and it's like really no chest uh, but there's been other times where i've been very fortunate to get a chest this this is big just that alone builds in some extra souls if the dual soul encounter over there is a lot more challenging so there's no hidden information this is where the tactics come in uh, no trap so i get to pick which node to come on i've declared the assassin first player and i'm going to place the aggro on the assassin, once we lay him out, we look over here, the hollow soldier is gonna move one forward towards the closest character, large hollow soldier, and he's gonna knock back for five points of damage. I don't wanna take that. Uh, so essentially one node a turn. We'll have the assassin go first. We'll place him here. And the warrior, I will place here to go we'll assign so now we're ready for it to start and got to have him face because that's where he's going monsters activate first we're going to have him advance to the closest node his turn is done we are going to advance up one spend our free movement and make an attack so okay well, let's um let's just I don't want to spend, wind up spending my flask. I certainly don't want to go back to the bonfire. He has five life. So he hits five and he's got to take five on there. We're going to gamble a little bit. This is the, ch this is the trouble I get into when it comes to board gaming. Uh, solo is one thing because I will gamble and kind of leverage everything on the dice. But I can see if I'm playing with a more conservative group and a bunch of other players where they're like, Fritz, just, just calm down a little bit. Tone it down. We're going to expend three stamina to roll three dice. I've marked it off on there. Stamina, health, if they meet, you're dead. You go back to the bonfire. We were going to subtract one on here. So that's going to take that out because it's minus one. Uh, he has one armor. So that's going to flip that down to that. Uh, three damage. That is most excellent. I'm going to put that on there. That's that's good. The warrior, well, with only two black dice, I don't know if the warrior will be able to finish him. He might. I'm already getting way, way ahead of myself. So let's, let's, um, he's going to knock back. He's going to move and knock me back. We'll move to here. I'm going to try and dodge because to take five damage, I've got one die. So the best I can do is two or I can absorb, uh, I can dodge everything. I already got way ahead. Well, he knocked me back. I'm gonna try and dodge the attack. Then I get to pick what node I'm moving on. I'm getting a little bit ahead. I apologize. 
with the thought, we're better off doing one dodge and one dodge on here. Of course, I'll eat five if I fail. So we've got the dodge. I got to pick where we're going to go. We're going to go here because the attack was not successful. And that's going to give me another stamina. Moving to the warrior. Can the warrior pull it off? Aggro is going to go on him. Uh, we're going to move one free move. We're going to move one up. We're not going to attack multiple nodes, so everything in the one node. So it's just going to be the two dice. I'm not going to use a reroll yet. There we go. Four. Its armor is going to reduce it down to one. That's going to cause three damage, six total. We take out the large hollow soldier. That is an excellent first way to start Dark Souls. So we're going to flip the chest. We're going to do a little housekeeping. We're going to go back to the bonfire. We're going to gain... Put that in the soul cache here. Gain four souls. Uh, gain two items from opening the chest. That is an excellent draw right there. Okay, so this is actually this is this is really really good. This is going to make an excellent secondary weapon to add bleed on for the assassin, but I'm going to have to give up the shield. Or, or the shield slot, because I'm going to want the primary weapon to deal damage, and then I'm going to want the secondary weapon to deal bleed. That's going to take away from my dodge, so I'm going to have to work spending money on upgrading the assassin's armor at some point. Again, depending on what I draw. But this is going to get slot right in. Its requirement is dexterity 15, so I can immediately uh, upgrade that slot to accommodate it. That's good. Uh, the spiked mace is a decent weapon for the warrior it's going to take some stamina one three five but we're getting into the blue dice territory which i feel like if i'm going to go for uh if i'm going to tackle the level two souls i need at least multiple black dice on there and i need at least one and multiple black dice to, to even begin to take on the gargoyle so right here with the spiked mace i can do that uh the downside is it's a two-handed weapon I do have a block and resist here. Gem slot, I'm going to utilize for damage if I get a gem in there. But I, I still, I want to, I need to boost up my shield. And the difference here, if we compare these two, if I had the stats to go with the spiked mace right now, the base shield, I'm trading one block for one block. That's the symbol there on the left with the one black die. So I'm swapping one for one. That works, but as a tank, I want some of the other shields that have, and I'm not going to search through the deck for examples, because again, I don't want to give away any spoilers on there. I, I need to have blue dice in order, blue dice for block and multiples of them to try and block the mini boss on there. So I'm going to need to look to try and get, uh, is it the spider shield? Well, again, sorry, no spoilers. Uh, some of the shields that I can equip in addition to a two-handed weapon, some of the bucklers and things like that. But this is this is a great start. How are we going to spend our souls? Usually, if I didn't draw a chest, what I would like to do is uh, spend two souls to draw two item cards and then make the decision, do I start upgrading stats or draw more cards? Generally, we're not going to equip items right away because we don't have the stats for it. But if each character has at least... Uh, and this is true whether it's solo or multiplayers, if each character at least has something they're working for. Um, when I play with the group, if you're going to work towards something, we'll kind of put it over on our pile here so you know that's the gear we're working for. If I'm playing solo, I just kind of like to have it all on the home base tile. So we've got two gears, uh, two items to work for. Let's spend some souls to at least start getting those items ready. So we've got to spend to 15 so we're going to upgrade to tier one, spend two souls. That's going to give us uh, two souls there. We need 32 strength, 22 faith. That's going to take a lot. So we're going to need six and six. That's going to take a while to work on. And in working on that for the warrior, there's a good chance some better gear might come up. So I'm going to spend the remainder of the souls to draw two more. Two more from here. Let's see what we get. Oh, 
firebombs. Excellent. Oh, this is this is a this is good. There's a collective sigh of relief. This is amazing for the uh, this gear right here. If I do this on the on the assassin, that's almost ready to go right against the gargoyle on here. This is great because it's 1515. It's a one bump up and a two bump up. That's that is really good on it. Look at the damage on that. It's four stamina, yes, but you have the range, you have the magic, you have the area effect, you have it pushing back. That's firebomb is good. I already lost track. Okay, so we get to draw one more. Uh, sunset armor. Stats are okay. This this is um, okay. This actually isn't that bad for the assassin, also, because I still have one evade, but it upgrades the damage in case I don't want to evade, and it has two slots. So I'm not saying we'll develop into that, but that's that's a good draw. That's some really good. That's a good gear draw on there. So that's one room. I'm going to keep this at 16 minutes because I'm fighting against YouTube upload times. But as a peak, because next we'll do this room, I'll let you guys see what's in here. I'm going to move the camera up here. I'm going to look away. And I'm going to let you guys see what's in the next room. All right, more Dark Souls. More to come. More thinking, more strategy. It's not just hack and slash as much as Fritz, Fritz is hack and slash, but that's, that's what Conan is for, hack and slash.